I'll be using the Moss Epoxy flag system with medium hardener to show you how I'll make my Sandy Shores coasters. The first thing that you'll need is a mixing cup with clear markings on it. The flag system uses a two to one mixing ratio, so you'll need to make sure that you have your cup clearly marked so there's no confusion when you go to pour. Now that we've poured in both parts of our resin, it's important that we mix it thoroughly. The striations that you see in the resin need to be completely mixed together so it turns out clear before we pour. If we don't properly mix our resin, it can cause issues when curing and leave it to be sticky and gross. So make sure that you mix your resin properly and that there are no striations left in the mixture when you're done. This step normally takes me around two to three minutes, depending on the volume of resin that I'm mixing. But with the Moss Epoxy's flag system, because of the low viscosity of the resin, it's actually really easy to mix. One tip as well when you're mixing, make sure to get the edges and the sides of the cup. You can use your spatula or your stir stick to do this, but just make sure you get all of the resin that's stuck on the sides mixed in properly. See how there's no longer striations in the resin and it's clear? This means that we've done a really good job mixing and it's time to pour. Our working time with the Moss Epoxy flag system with medium hardener is around 20 minutes. So it's really important that we set up our shells inside of the coasters before we do our initial pour. This helps make sure that we don't run out of time while we're doing the work. This is a trick that I haven't tried yet, so I thought I would give it a go in this tutorial. I read somewhere that if you spray alcohol into the mold before you pour resin into it, it's less likely to have the micro bubbles in the mold. So I thought I would try it for the top row of coasters and then I'll leave the middle row without the alcohol spray first just to see if it's a major difference. So I like to have a mixture of sizes of shells in my coasters, some of them big and then a lot of little small ones as well. So the initial setup, I'll put in the bigger ones so it's already done and I can make sure that they're going to be small enough to not um, stick out the back of the coaster once it's finished. As you pour your resin into the mold, it's a good idea to try and pour in the middle of the coaster mold. This helps prevent micro bubbles from forming inside the lip. It also just makes it easier. It's all coming from one place and you can see how much you actually need. This will be the first layer that we pour for this coaster set. It's actually going to be the top of the coaster set when we're finished. So see how the shells are all upside down? That's because when we demold, the top will actually be reversed from what we're seeing right now. The amount of resin that we're looking to pour in this first layer is really only enough to cover down in the edges of the mold and to make a nice thin clear coat where the shells are going to be. Our second layer will actually cover up the rest of the coaster with the sand. So here we just need that thin layer. Once you've poured in that clear coat of resin, I like to just move the shells around and make sure that there's no air, po air bubbles or air pockets hiding underneath them. This ensures that the resin actually gets underneath the shell, so when we demold there's not any holes or air pockets of resin showing. I'm using a silicone stir stick just to move the shells around. You can also use a popsicle stick or tweezers, totally up to you. Now we're going to add in all of the tiny little shells. I'll link everything in the description of this video so you know where I buy all of my stuff from. I actually get my bigger shells from here in Florida, but the small tiny ones are really hard to find, so I do purchase those. So you can find them in the description in this video. Now that we've finished the first layer of the coasters, take some alcohol spray and just spray it lightly over the tops of the resin to pop any bubbles that are sitting there. Next, I'm gonna take this little silicone tool and actually pop out any of the little bubbles inside, like deep in the mold that you can see there. I like to try and bring them up to the surface 
just to make sure that we aren't going to have any holes once we demold them and they cure. This can be a little bit of a tedious process to go through, but trust me, it's totally worth it in the end to not have those little holes when you demold. After waiting about three hours in between layers, I'm going to start mixing my resin for the second layer. So same mass epoxy flag system with medium hardener, two to one mixing ratio. Make sure you mix thoroughly. Now I'm going to add the sand from one of our local beaches here in Florida into the resin. I don't have an exact mixture ratio for my sand. I honestly just pour and then wait and see what the consistency is like and decide if I want to add more sand. I decided that I wanted a bit more sand in my mixture, so I just added some more in and then I'm going to give it a good stir to make sure it's combined. Once I'm happy with the consistency of the sand and resin ratio, I'll pour in the second layer into the mold. Pour in enough sand to cover just to the top of the edge of the mold. That way it doesn't overflow and cause a big mess. You can always add more later, but it's really hard to take resin out, so it's better to under pour rather than over pour. I'm just checking to see if I've got the resin just to the top of the coaster mold. For the second layer, I prefer to use the heat gun just to pop all the bubbles that you see sitting at the top of the resin. The sand causes a lot of those bubbles, so my preference is to use the heat gun because the alcohol ink just isn't strong enough to pop all of them. Lastly, right before I leave, I just spray a little bit of alcohol across the tops of the coasters to pop any last bubbles. And now for my favorite part of the video, demolding the finished coasters. Take your time, have a look, enjoy the finished product. See what a difference it made when you actually take the time to go in there with that little tool and pop all the little bubbles? There are literally no holes in the edge. It is amazing. So after I demolded both the set that I sprayed with the alcohol beforehand and the other set that I didn't, I really didn't find much of a difference between the two, to be honest. I didn't really have bubbles in either of them. so. I'm not sure if it actually works, but it might be worth a try. So I'm actually going to add a layer of waves to two sets of the coasters that I made. I had someone request this and I thought it was a really cool idea and I really wanted to see what it looked like as well. So I figured let's do it. So for the wave layer, it's really important that you use Tabletop Pro that Mass Epoxy makes, not the flag system. The flag system just doesn't get the lacing that you would get when you use tabletop. You can also use Art Pro, totally up to you, but my go-to is usually tabletop, so that's what I'm using here. So when adding the wave layer in, first we have to pour a clear coat of resin inside the coaster. Because we want to maintain a bit of the lip for the sweat on a drink, we don't want to put in too much resin that will then fill up to the top of the lip. So make sure you pour a really thin layer and then you can move the resin around the bottom of the coaster like you see me doing here. If your resin is too thick, you might want to try just heating it slightly with the heat gun. It'll make it so it can move a bit easier around the bottom of the coaster. Next, we're going to add the white pigment into the clear resin. I used Mixol white for this one. Um, I find that it works really well with Moss Epoxies. You get some really good lacing in there. I'm going to use my Seek One heat gun to make the waves for these coasters, and I'm just going to keep it on the low setting. If you put it on high, the resin's going to start flying around the place and get a little crazy. So first I'll run it over the resin just to heat it up a little bit, and then that way it makes blowing out the white pigment a lot easier and you can get those really juicy cells. Lastly, we'll use our torch to solidify the lacing in there and get some really nice bubbles going. Thanks so much for joining me in this tutorial today. I hope you learned a few things and would love to see photos of the coasters that you made using this video. Don't forget, all the tools and products that I use for this tutorial today can be found in the description section of this video. Thank you.